Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for that warm and wonderful introduction, Chris Carberry, Janet Ivey. Thank you to you, the audience, for joining us today on our wonderful, stellar, some might say, a panel ahead on space exploration and how we can expand inclusivity and diversity. With me to discuss this, I have four incredible panelists, Dr. Ideal Gonzalez, Andrea Yip, Dr. Aaron Prasad, Shayla Redmond, and we will get into their incredible bios in just a second here. But today is all about them and their journeys. And so to kick things off, we are going to ask each one of our panelists after a brief introduction to their amazing work to date about their journey. So to kick things off, our opening question is, Tell us about your journey in the space exploration world, the space sector. Did you find it typical? Did you find it that you were sometimes an out outsider? Tell us how you went about your journey, what you're doing now. Um, we're going to go in the order ideal, Andrea, Aaron, Shayla. And so let me introduce to you our first panelist, the incredible Dr. Ideal Gonzalez, doctorate in molecular genetics at the California Institute of Technology, followed by a postdoc on myotonic dystrophy supported by um, an $18 million NIH grant with respect to spinal cord injury, a passionate and fervent advocate for all things STEAM and STEM, including co-founder of a not-for-profit called the GOLD Initiative, Gift Over Learning Differences, GOLD Initiative, co-founder of the STEAM-based student-led magazine, uh, Mind. Um, she was named 2017 Teacher of the Year in the state of California, a dear colleague and friend from the International National Institute for Astronautical Sciences, fellow Possum 13 ambassador, the list goes on and on and on. But rather than tell you for the entire hour about all of my amazing panelists, I would rather turn it over to them. So ideal, over to you. Tell us about your journey and how you got to where you are and what you encountered during, you've got five minutes. All right, so thank you for that wonderful introduction. It's a pleasure to be here with these wonderful individuals. So my path was, is untraditional. Um, grew up in the South Bronx, Puerto Rican, first generation to graduate high school and college. My parents came to the country from Puerto Rico. And there were three things that uh, wrote, basically drove me to this uh, field. And it was a cockroach, Star Trek, and the Cosby Show. Um, where I grew up, um, I was fortunate enough to be in Catholic school. Both of my parents worked, and there was no, there was only expectations of us to not be pregnant by the end of eighth grade, and um, hopefully we'd be okay after high school if we graduated. And it, it started with a cockroach when I was younger. There was a cockroach who laid eggs, and that inspired me because I told my mom, hey, I actually hatched it. And I was curious of why um, these egg sacs emerged, young little cockroaches, and they transitioned from white to brown once they had the oxygen. Then Star Trek inspired me thinking, wait, I could do this? When I saw Lieutenant Uhura, Nichelle Nichols, because she looked like my aunt. She was... Multi, uh, multilingual, she knew how to fight, she was a scientist, and I'm like, that could be me. But I never knew I could go to college until I saw the Cosby Show, believe it or not. Um, it was Tony Orlando, uh, Puerto Rican, and that particular episode said, I went to college, and I'm like, whoa. So I asked if I could go to college, and I was told, uh, maybe it's not for you. But um, my neighborhood, there was a lot of deaths and a lot of individuals dying. So I didn't want to be that kind of statistic. So I found a way to go to college. And the person who helped me, who believed in me, was Dr. Eddie Knowles. Uh, he was the dean at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. And I was talking to him. He actually visited my high school. And I told him my passions. He looked at my grades. He looked at what I was saying and was, and he actually told me, you know what, you're the real deal. I'm going to take a chance on you. And that blew my mind. From then, I entered RPI. So this is a long journey. I'm almost done, I swear. I didn't know I had a learning difference. And I was just uh, failing everything. I was doing cheerleading. I was doing a couple of jobs and I was failing everything. I was studying 24 seven. And if it wasn't for my boyfriend, now husband, now who realized I had a learning difference, I was diagnosed from a one eight to a four row, 
got a full ride to go to Caltech. Uh, I mean, yeah, after I graduated cum laude, went to Caltech, graduated there, started uh, my postdoc at the Institute of Genetic Medicine, studying my atomic dystrophy, opened up my lab at uh, Cal Poly Pomona, and then I realized I had an opportunity to become a scientist. I mean, I am a scientist, but also an astronaut. And having the worms that I studied, the possibility for space, that is where my journey began. And now I'm so much closer because I'm able to perform research, inspire younger students, because I'm also an educator. And I'm working with a wonderful organization, IIAS and Project Possum. So what an opportunity to have civilians pursue science and use space, microgravity as a tool to aid humankind and our earth. Wow, ideal. Um, I asked for an opening statement, but I didn't expect that to be to get so emotionally invested in that. that what a powerful journey. And I, I learned so much about you. Um, now I'm going to switch it over to Andrea Yip, fellow Canadian CEO and founder of Luna Design and Innovation, a Canadian startup focusing on biotech and pharmaceutical companies planning missions to space. Luna's goal is to advance health and humanity so people can lead full, healthy and purposeful lives on space. Uh, in space and on Earth, Luna, and I know this from personal experience through collaboration with Andrea, Luna is a channel partner for Blue Origin's new Shepard suborbital reusable vehicle, um, focusing on Canadian payloads, global biotech and pharma. And Andrea didn't start out wanting to go into a startup. She is a biologist, design strategist and public health practitioner with experience in both the public and private sectors to tell us more about her journey and how she got here. Andrea, please take it away. Sure. Thank you so much, Shauna. Uh, it's a delight to be on this panel. I'm, I just, I love the the conversation so far. Um, so just a bit about me. I, I always have to credit my great grandmother for getting me excited and interested in space uh, because I grew up with her and she did not speak uh, English uh, in, in the household. And, but she, I watched TV with her all the time. Uh, like Canadian TV shows. And um, I remember she would love shows that were so visually stimulating. Uh, so she, she would love watching uh, the Worldwide Wrestling Fe Federation. That was like her number one show. But number two was Star Trek actually. So a connection to Ideal. And, um, and I think just watching those shows with her just got me so delighted. I didn't understand what was happening. I was a bit young at the time, but I think the the visual journey and the stories that they they told uh, through you know being on different planets, being in different worlds, just captivated me. And I, I I remember that as a very early memory of space. But it took me a while to actually start working in the industry itself. And so I would say that I had a very a traditional path into uh, the space industry. I as Shauna mentioned, I have a background in biology and public health. Uh, I started out my career doing a lot of sexual health education, doing um, co-creation and design thinking, um, all these fancy buzzwords to mean I was working on the ground with folks to design products and services that were meaningful for their health and well-being. And that sort of design thread led me into working um, in pharma. So I, I did that for several years in New York. And, and then while I was there, I, I started to just explore more widely about around the innovation space. And I started to have conversations with folks around, you know, I heard about the space research stuff, like this is so interesting, like why aren't we doing more of this? And uh, some people thought I was just totally out there with some of those ideas, but I, there, there were some people who were like, yeah, this is interesting. Like, why aren't these worlds merging together? And at that time, I started to notice that the industry was just changing. It was, uh, opening up in a way that I hadn't seen before. And that got me really excited because I, I saw companies, space companies trying to, uh, you know, engage new audiences. They were trying to sell, st start to sell tickets to space uh, to people like you and, and me. And, and I thought that was just so interesting and exciting because now suddenly it's not just um, a captivated space audience that they were really trying to target. It was um, a broader audience. And so uh, I basically took my design chops and uh, created an, an experience map um, 
detailing what a future commercial astronaut experience would look like. And I shared it with all the space companies um, that I was really excited about. And they started talking to me and that got me a start. I started to work with Virgin Galactic on their future astronaut experience and started this partnership with Blue Origin. And so that's that was just my entry point, but it's probably not the, the most traditional one. Thank you so much. So from molecular genetics to commercial space and design uh, all the way now to th fluid thermodynamics. So it is my pleasure to uh, invite Aaron to talk about his journey in his um, in the space industry. So by way of background, Dr. Aaron Prasad, another fellow Canadian um, BSc from University of Toronto in biomedical, um, the biomedical stream of engineering science. He has previously launched two payloads to the ISS. He has received his PhD in, ready for this, statistical thermodynamics and quantum mechanics, try saying that three times fast, from the U of T and is currently a research scientist in mechanical engineering at MIT where he's developing nanotechnologies for purification, dialysis, treatment and fusion reactors. And as if that were not enough, he is a fellow director, uh, director of bioastronautics over at the International Institute for Astronautical Sciences, AAAS. He is a board member for the Association of Spaceflight Professionals, as well as co-founder of Astrius. So Aaron, tell us how you got to where you are. Take it away. Yeah, thank you, Shauna. Um, so I grew up in Trinidad and Tobago, and I can't think of a more non-conventional start <laughs> to the space sector than that little that little island of a country in the, in the Caribbean. Um, when I was about four years old, my family moved to uh, to Montreal, and I was suddenly immersed in a new language uh, from Trinidad, which is English, to Montreal, which is French. And having to learn how to communicate and make friends um, was was a real challenge. And the way that I found to do that was through video games. Uh, then the, the NES system had come out around that time, and so I spent a lot of time with video games as opposed to studying and so on. Um, so my grades <laughs> were not all that stellar. Um, and then when my family moved back to Trinidad, my grades were so bad that I was put back two grades <laughs> in Trinidad. Um, and then something, I guess, happened there where I didn't like the idea of being put back two grades. And so I worked really hard while in Trinidad. Within 10 months, I was able to advance two grades. So in case you're curious, it's grade three, four, and five. I advanced two grades in uh, in in those uh, ten months, and there was something in there that that really resonated with me. Um, but to answer the question of why space, well, my sister was always taller than I was, and nothing I could do could get me taller. And then one day I realized from from watching the news that astronauts actually grow like two inches taller when they're in space, and that is the reason why I decided to pursue this this avenue to become an an astronaut. Um, so my grades, uh, when I moved back from, um, from Trinidad to, to Toronto, having worked so hard, um, I actually was way ahead of my Toronto class. And um, that really set me up to go into high school, the IB program. And what I realized about myself is I, I'm attracted to things that are challenging. So I signed up for the IB program because it was the most challenging program I could take in high school. And then going to university, I signed up for the engineering science program because it was the most challenging program I could take at the University of Toronto, uh, hands down. And I think all of that experience sort of showed me that um, about myself, I love a challenge. And if someone presents to me a problem where there, there's a solution, you just gotta do it, I'm not interested. But if someone presents to me a challenge and there isn't a way forward, especially if they say this is an impossible problem to solve. That's what I want to work on. That's what I want to do. And that's the reason I went into the field of, um, of quantum physics and statistical thermodynamics and so on was because I've, I was told there's no way you'd be able to develop theories and models and experiments along those lines. Uh, so, so, so to tie this back to, to how I got to where I am today, um, during my undergrad, doing the internet science program, there, I had to take an internship in my third year. And my grades in that program, it being so difficult, had actually dropped. And all of my colleagues and friends were being placed in all of these awesome jobs. And I'm applying for these jobs, but compared to my friends and colleagues, I wasn't the brightest uh, you know, bulb, so to speak, and I never got a position. 
But very near the end of the internship hiring period, the Canadian Space Agency put out an application and they were looking for someone to manage their flight campaign. And because my friends had been uh, gotten job offers before, there weren't many people left to apply for that job. And on top of that, you had to be bilingual in French. And I had grown up in Montreal, uh, so I knew French. And that was sort of the, the, the big break, if you will. I ended up getting a job working at the Canadian Space Agency, and that sort of catapulted me. It didn't just open a door. It like shot me through my career, opening a lot of doors in the space sector. Um, and now I'm involved in all of these programs that Shauna had mentioned. That is wild. I didn't know a lot of that about you, Aaron. And also you've, you've pushed me to the conclusion that sibling rivalry is the best motivator in life. Um, so to take us home on these amazing opening statements and these amazing journeys in throughout the space sector, I have the inimitable Shayla Redmond, American. She is currently an engineer at the Mercer Research Center in Georgia. She works on various aerospace contracts um, in support of sustainment and innovation. She received her BSc in aerospace engineering and physics from Tuskegee, Tuskegee University in, um, as well as a master's in science degree systems engineering with a concentration in space systems from the Air Force Institute of Technology. Her thesis, if you're ready for this, was based on the effects of sub rural polarization streams of of radar operations. And she is an all around rock star, director of education at AAAS, former Possum 13 ambassador. She is the founder of the not for profit STEAM Unlimited, focusing on sciences and arts and promoting these to grade school um, all the way up to the professional level, as well as opportunities in movies, fashion, and music to, pre to present these opportunities to underrepresented groups. So, Shayla, Tell us about how you ended up, where you started. Well, you told my story. You know, um, <laughs> man, I tell you, it's kind of like what Aaron, uh, the, the, the funny thing is, I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to do in life. Let's fast forward to high school and I'm trying, I'm about to graduate and I'm like, what am I going to major in? I like to explore. I wanted to be an astronomer. Then I want to be a Tomb Raider. Then I wanted to discover the deep oceans and then I wanted to find dinosaur bones, you know? So I was like, I have to explore. And I'm like, oh, the planet has a lot to explore but and deep seas have to, but there's enough in space. There's enough space in space. So I was like, you know, what's out there? I wanna see what's out there and what things can be discovered out there. That was the first um, uh, inclination or, or itch to be like, oh, I'm, I'm interested to see how, where this can go. So that helped get me to um, my degree as um, aerospace engineering. And then I double majored in physics because I really, I did a quantum physics class and I was like, man, Strodinger's cat, that's very interesting. You know, it's <laughs> kind of going uh, just the unknown and, and the theoretical aspect of it. So I, I really enjoyed that and it got deeper, my love for what can be done in space as far as experiments in space and how energy reacts in space and all that stuff was, very interesting to me. Um, and then of course, I, what I didn't put in my bio, cause you know, we had to keep it short. I, I was in the air force for seven years and now I am um, a reservist. So I'm part-time military, but I'm full-time engineer. And I, I'm, I'm enjoying myself as an engineer. I get to do the modeling, the CAD and, and all that. And eventually we'll be in the, in the aspect of ho hopefully applying that to space. Um, and of course, I have what else I didn't put in the bio because I have three kids. <laughs> I have a one-year-old. I have a six-year-old. Oh, I have a one-year-old, a four-year-old, about to be seven-year-old. So my life is um, a lot of stuff is happening at once, and I'm trying to manage it all. Um, but yeah, space is uh, is something I love, and I want to continue to expand upon it. So, yeah. Okay. So my favorite takeaway from that is Shayla Redmond. Tomb Raider. I am slightly disappointed <laughs> that it's not come out to play. But you know, between all of these these careers you explored, it just seems like you were always an explorer um, at heart, which is you know fantastic. Um, and the fact that you do all of this, not for profit, founder, mom of three, uh, AAAS director, engineer, reservist, like how do you? Speak? Um, 
So I want to get to some of the questions um, that we've kind of alluded to during all of your opening statements. Um, and one of them, you've, you've, you've kind of, you know, a lot of the common theme that came out was, oh, you know, maybe space wasn't for me. I didn't have the grades. I, you know, I didn't belong there. Um, so when we look at the state of the space industry today, you know, how has that changed? Like, do we, are we where we want to be? Um, when it terms to in terms of being more inclusive when it comes to representation of disciplines and demographics. Um, and if if not, like how how are we changing? Are we changing fast enough? And if if we're not there, how do we facilitate that change? Yep. Who wants to take that one first? Well, I'll I'll start off with just uh, an observation. I don't know if you saw the um I, I'm sure everyone here has seen this. The European Space Agency's call for astronauts that, that happened a few months ago. And one of the things that really struck out to me, this is a government agency, um, was they had a call for um, people that had disabilities. And I, I think that represents a, a shift uh, in thinking, at least for one agency, in how to make space ac accessible um, to people who are not necessarily coming from top of the line, top gun backgrounds. Um, and I, I think that uh, opportunity has come about because of the realization that you can have some very good people suited for, um, for space, microgravity, to do science or to communicate just you know, the passion of space and the art behind it, who may not necessarily need to be like a, a well-trained fighter pilot, so to speak. So I, I thought that was a really great move on ESA's part. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're seeing so many new initiatives like that, as well as the Astro Access campaign, for those of you who are following along. Um, Ideal, you looked like you had some thoughts to chime in. Yes, I think it is 